and welcome YouTube types. Welcome to the Smash News Network, least busted name in news. I'm your host, Dan, a.k.a. smash a -Mash, and we've got more spectacular imagery of the closest star. It's only the most in-depth coverage of space weather on the entire internet, and the most detailed imagery of El Sol, Helios, the sun, the local yellow dwarf, the closest star, whatever you'd like to call it. This is ionized iron and the colorized magnetogram composite from the Solar Dynamics Observatory. The radio flux only at 101 solar flux units, so wait till you see how low the solar wind speed is. We are expecting a coronal mass ejection to strike in the next few hours. As we forecasted for a couple days, we are approaching midday today on Sunday, May 5th. Next, the last four hours of magnetohydrodynamic pressure. Looking at Earth from Earth's magnetic moment from space, magnetohydrodynamic pressure scaled in this imagery in nanopascals. Quite calm conditions, geomagnetically speaking, to say the least. Next, ground magnetic perturbations, Earth's magnetic moment from the ground. This scale is nanotesla magnetic flux density. Again, we've got a very low solar wind speed, below 300 kilometers per second. Anyway, like Earth's magnetic moment from space, Earth's magnetic moment from the ground is depicted here the last four hours. And let's blast through a whole bunch more data, such as the KP index, which has been mostly at one over the past about three days. Geomagnetic calm conditions. So looking at the real-time solar wind here, check out the solar wind speed. 282 kilometers per second, solar wind density 10.5 protons per cubic centimeter. It's a decent density, but it's very, very slow solar wind. And so when we do see a coronal mass ejection, and it's likely in the next few hours, we can expect to see a significant signal in the data. Getting into magnetic data, here are your, here are your GOES magnetometer readings for the past three days. We saw an interesting divergence happen here between midnight local time for the GOES 16 and midnight local time for the GOES 17. And we can expect to see those rise as they approach noon local time for the satellites. Next, the heliospheric current sheet while we're looking at magnetic data. Here's the magnetic orientation of the plasma. It's polar oriented. And there is a North Pole current sheet looking like it's headed this way. This data is derived from 51 ground-based magnetometers, magnetometers on stereo B and on stereo A. Here's a line of sight view. I would also note that the North Pole coronal hole region is still quite heliographically located right at the pole. Let's get into coronal holes next. Here's your coronal hole line of sight plot showing the sun's B field in blue. You can see the south polar field is a bit offset there, so it's starting to make its way away from the pole. And the north one still largely attenuated at the pole. And you can see it here in this imagery. North pole there, right there around the heliospheric polar region. And you can see the south pole kind of offset here. So it's a little bit over to the east from our perspective. And let's move to sunspots. We've seen sunspots largely shrink and degrade and set since yesterday. So... Here is your flare probability and detected sunspot groups. These two sunspots did get names, but they haven't grown much. They've been more like shrinking, I think, in the past 24 hours. And they're all fairly magnetically simple sunspots, not super likely to produce major flares. So here you can see this imagery. Now, even though these are alpha-class sunspots, they are still more likely to produce flares as they approach the limb. In my opinion, the most likely place to see significant flares is down here. Uh, it's the only place we saw a C-class flare, I think, for the past 24 hours. Let's move on. 
So the sunspots in the west have been mostly stable here. Uh, the ones in the east have been looking like they've been degrading. Follow us on Twitch if you want to see us when we go live. Download the mobile app. It'll actually alert you when we go live. Thanks to our Gold Smash team members. Our latest post for Gold Smash team members only is the solar polar fields. What's attenuating them? Some interesting graphics there on that one. That's only for our Gold level Smash team members. Today's featured product is all of them. We've placed them in order of best selling here. And keep in mind, some of these products reflect my opinions and some of these products don't. For example, when I say Mensa, make Earth not suck again, I'm doing my part. Making these videos is part of it because we noticed a giant hole. A giant hole in the realm <laughs> of heliophysics, astrophysics, and um, yeah, sun science, the Earth sun system, etc. So here we are. I figured I would share the information that I typically look at. So one more thing to say. Again, our featured products are in order of best selling. And uh, I don't know if that's any surprise to you or not. I would say to each of you Universum Liberate because if I could wave my magic wand, I'd set everybody free. Anyway, visit our shop. The designs are spectacular. They are conversation starters. Tell your friends and foes about us. And we'll get back to the data here. It wasn't even a C-class flare. It was only a B7. A B7 class flare is all we've seen in the past 24. The most major flare. Uh, it did come from the southeastern limb. We'll show it. No spikes in the proton flux associated with any of that. And that flare did come from down here. So again... Oh, I stand corrected. The flare came from this sunspot right here. Right there is that flare, I think. And that's barely even noteworthy as it's not even a C-class flare. We were at C-class background levels just a few weeks ago. Anyway, here's a star chart if you're wondering what's going on above your head. Maybe head to in-the-sky.org. Put in a star chart like mine. Mine faces the south, the location of the ecliptic. I'm currently facing the south and so is my sofa. Next, the solar system forecast. We've got a crescent waxing. Let's see where things will be in a week. Here's where things will be in a week. We will have a gibbous waxing as we approach another June full moon. And next we'll move to coronagraphs before we close the video out. And here is just today so far. Again, we are expecting a coronal mass ejection to be striking within the next couple of hours. And if you want to learn more about that, check out our previous videos. We uh, covered it just hours after it occurred. So now we're going to go have a look at a little more data from Stereo A and the Soho Lasco C3, located at Lagrange 5 and Lagrange 1, respectively. And I just wanted to pause it here because this is another deceptive coronal mass ejection. So if you look at Stereo A, you can see some ejecta coming out of the North Polar region right here. And for you new viewers, Earth would be off in this direction from Stereo A's perspective. So you see that ejecta? It's making this CME look a little bit deceptive uh, because the latest one looks like it's going to miss Earth to the west. So that's my best guess on that. Um, you can see this event over here as well. That is a separate event, apparently, from this one in the north. So I would say that there are no Earth-facing components, Earthly directed components from any of that activity. That's my best guess, and uh, I'm sticking to it. So we've got one more series of images for you here. This is the SDO imagery in 171 angstroms. Thanks for tuning in to the Daily Space Weather. 
congratulations on realizing that the channel exists despite the pathetic censorship on various pathetic big tech platforms. Dear Big Tech, please stop misleading investors. It's still a crime even in a banana republic. Thanks for tuning in, and may that solar wind be at your back.